I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. July 14, 2013, Washtenaw County, Southeast Michigan. One hot, muggy day that summer, we entered this remote, swampy marsh area with patches of thick woods that changed a lot of things for me. To my personal instincts, nothing seemed right from the time we ventured into that location, and everything seemed out of sorts there. Twenty years and a half on the streets in law enforcement and two stints in the military along that period, and you learn to trust your instincts. Trusting your instincts is a skill not everyone will learn nor understand. But your instincts, your inner being, never lies. It will never betray you. So I was quite familiar with that feeling. I felt it many times over the years. Over time, you learn to trust your instincts. Your instincts keep you safe, and they will never lie to you. I was already aggravated by the hot, sticky temperatures. I was sweaty. Flies and mosquitoes were biting like mad. I guess I might have even been hungry and a bit grumpy, too. But nothing seemed right. The deeper we ventured, the more unexplainable aggravation or annoyance I felt, when suddenly I heard a break. It wasn't a twig or anything. It had intonations of a thick branch break, and I whispered for my friend to halt, and we both listened. Not hearing anything else, we proceeded forward with my partner in the lead, me lagging behind when we heard another break. Everything went dead silent in the woods, and I can tell we didn't smell anything, but my instincts told me something was amiss. I was glancing up all around the trees, and there it was. It's either standing behind a tree or hanging onto a tree, peeking a distance away, but unbelievably close in relative terms. My partner was inspecting a large stick nest with his back to me and it. I'm thinking it's time to leave before this thing decides to ramble over my way. So here we are, surrounded by trees, and three trees in particular, with a large stick nest to the west, and three stick teepees to the east of my feet. I don't want to panic my friend. I want to leave, so I turn toward my friend and say something like, I'm ready to leave, and quickly turn back around and start snapping photos in a 180 degree sweep. Somebody said before, and I heard it and read it many times since, there are more than one species of Bigfoot out there. I know it, I believe it, and seen it. What I seen appeared strangely human, but with thick reddish-brown hair on the head, shoulders, right arm, waist right down to its knees. It wasn't the atypical patty ape-looking black hairy beast. This thing I seen was a freak of nature, and big. I've learned to compartmentalize stressful incidents over the years, where you put those things that bother you most away, much the same way you would hang your coat and hat, leaving it there until needed again, but you don't take it unless you need it. If I were to guess, we're probably talking about the beast being between 30 to 60 yards away, and it was over 8 feet tall, I would think. It appeared to me as though it was climbing down or going up. I couldn't tell, but I didn't want to wait and see. High up in the trees, I could see another creature, and this appeared to have blonde hair and looked like one would expect a werewolf to look like, but with red lips, and it seemed disinterested, looking off in another direction, but silent. We're out of there, and just before we start across the field from which we crossed to get to the woods, we found this weak old print in the dried mud that measures about 17 to 17 and a half inches in length. I'm uncharacteristically quiet all the way home. Let me also say this once again. I'm not an expert, nor am I a Bigfoot researcher. I've seen a lot of things, murders, suicides, accidents, so on and so forth, but nothing bothered me more personally than what i seen that day. It is real as reality is to you and your world. Perhaps it wasn't just the sudden odd strangeness of feelings that seemed to overwhelm me or the moment of visual contact, but all of it together called my attention like invisible fingers beckoning me forward against my will. What I felt wasn't love, peace, or happiness, but an undeniable sense of some powerful hand of hatred some dark foreboding that is very capable of lulling you into a weird state of bliss and helplessness. And for me, that is perhaps the most defining thing that I can say about it. I will never forget it. Hi, my name is Erin. My encounter occurred in Colorado and was back in June of 2006 in Gunnison Valley at the Black Canyon while hiking. 
Me and a friend decided the day before to take a quick trip up there and do some hiking. We got up there early, around 6.30 a.m., just before the sun was coming up. We finally got there and found a place to park and got our packs set up and had something to eat at the truck. When we finally finished getting set up, we started our hike into the trailhead. We were moving slow because I had a bad ankle spray three months previous and wasn't as fast or limber as I normally would be. It wasn't until 11 a.m. that we were far enough into the hike that we couldn't see any more off-trails on this hike. We finally made it about five miles in and came to a small river that ran off into a lake on the side of a mountain valley. The lake is around 100 yards across with a lot of huge boulders all around it. Now, when I say huge boulders, I mean huge. They were the same size as a small home. The whole purpose of this hike was to get to this lake so we could do some fly fishing up here. As we got set up to start fishing, my buddy started on one side of the lake and I went directly across to the other side. When I finally made it over to the other side and climbed over the huge boulders, I got my fly rod out and started to fish. I literally wasn't there for more than 15 minutes, and all of a sudden, I started to smell this awful, awful smell. It smelled like a mix of something dead, a skunk, and rotten eggs, even like some ammonia or a sulfur smell. I thought there might have been a geyser or something like that because of the smell. I even thought that somehow I had some stink bait get into my backpack and it had spilled because the smell was intense. Because of the smell, I started to move back over to the side where my friend was fishing. And when I had got on top of a boulder there and when my back was turned to where I was fishing, I heard a whoop, which sounded really quick and like it came from something with big lungs. I turned around to see what it was and didn't see anything. It was at this time I got really creeped out because I thought I was being watched. No matter where I go, I always carry, especially when I go out into the wilderness camping or hiking, so I pulled out my weapon, which was a 1911 45 Cal. I made my way over to my buddy and asked him if he had smelled anything bad over here, like something dead or rotten. He said no, but asked why I had my gun out. I said I don't know, I just got this weird feeling I was in danger or being watched over there. He just kind of smirked and was changing the fly on his leader. I told him that on the other side, there's this terrible smell. It wasn't until that moment I looked back over at the same spot I was at and seen this dark figure come from around a big boulder that was right next to the spot I was fishing. It was hunched over like it was trying not to be seen. It started to get down on all fours on the edge of the water and looked like it was sniffing around at the ground, but in real quick motions. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but I knew it wasn't a bear because it was too big and came from around the big boulder on two legs. I told my friend, what the hell is that? I looked at my buddy and his face was pale white. This thing finished smelling whatever it was smelling and crawled back behind the boulder and was gone, just as quick as it appeared. I told my friend I didn't know what it was, but I'm getting out of here. In my gut, I had a feeling what it was, but didn't want to admit it. We finally left the lake and hiked back to the truck. We never said two words to each other the whole hike back and the drive home. My buddy wouldn't talk about it to this day. He just changes the subject when I bring it back up and doesn't want to talk about it. I personally just want some kind of closure on what we had seen. November 1990. My uncle and I were elk hunting near Fossil Ridge, northeast of Gunnison, Colorado, when this incident occurred. It was late afternoon when we noticed a strong odor that we thought might be elk, so we headed east toward a small ridge, hoping to find one on the other side. As we got closer, we heard the noise of rocks being banged together. As we topped the ridge, we saw a large dark brown animal squatting at the edge of a dry creek bed with its back toward us. It was banging two rocks together with its hands and making a grunting, growling noise each time the rocks hit. It seemed to sense our presence almost immediately and turned around and looked at us. Then it quickly stood up and jumped across the creek in one motion. I remember thinking, nothing can move like that. It ran up the slope on the north side of the creek bed at an angle and disappeared into the pine and aspen trees farther up the hill. We could see it for about 50 feet before it was gone from sight. It moved really quietly for something that big. I estimate its height as six and a half feet tall. It was covered with long, dark brown hair that made me think of a yak. It had a strong smell. 
At least there was a strong smell in the area that was like elk urine. After we calmed down a bit, we went into the creek bed and found two rocks which were chipped and broken. We looked for other signs in that place, but couldn't find anything else. In the summer of 2004, I was camping with my family around Taylor Reservoir, towards Aspen, in a Coleman pop-up camper. Around midnight, I heard something moving, or licking or cast-iron skillet, that was washed and left by a tree outside our camper. I got up and opened the door of our camper, expecting to see a bear. At that time, my friend's dogs that were sleeping in his tent about a 100 feet from our camper started to bark. In the distance, I saw a large dark object running into the woods. The surprising thing was that our camper started to shake rapidly. In the morning, I asked my wife if she could feel the camper if I ran by it. I weighed 220 pounds and couldn't move it at all. When this animal ran away from it, it felt like an earthquake. Very strange. August 2000, I had gone on a backpacking training trip with four pack animals in preparation for an extended backpacking trip into the Wimanooch wilderness. Two of my goats are experienced packers and two were new. After several shorter treks, I had gone to Spring Creek Pass where I planned to walk part of the Colorado Trail, possibly down to Durango, then resupply and go back to the Wimanooch. After reaching one of the local creeks, one of my goats started getting sick, so I decided to head back toward the truck and bide my time while I assessed his situation. There were tons of people on the trail last summer, and I wanted to be alone, so I went off near DeRosa Mesa and found a meadow surrounded by thick forest where I didn't feel I'd encounter anyone. We stayed two days. During that time, the dogs, and particularly the goats, were periodically nervous. Then they would calm. Goats point to what they see or hear, but whenever I would look, I would not see anything. I checked the area, thinking there might be a bear or a mountain lion nearby, but didn't find signs that would indicate a den, and although there was bear scat in the area, it was not fresh. Still, this was a time of drought that had the bears hungry all over the state, and they were having bear problems down in Lake City right then, so, especially with a sick goat, I stayed alert to the possibility especially since I was also near one of the only water sources. In the meantime, I was doctoring my goat and working with the others. At one point, when I was playing tug-of-war and growling with my dogs, an older border collie and a border collie pup, the goats alarmed and bunched up around us, pointing at the woods. But when I checked, I couldn't see anything and the dogs didn't react. I periodically got the feeling we were being watched, then it would pass. The puppy occasionally got interested in something in the woods, but would come back. When I work with the goats, I sing a lot. They have also developed a fondness for the penny whistle, so I had spent a lot of time in the afternoon just playing music with all of us sprawled around the meadow together. The meadow was rich in smells, but aside from the plant smells from walking around, there was more a musky elk smell than anything. Lots of signs of deer and elk in the area. At dusk, the animals got extremely nervous. I had just gone inside my tent to get something. Both dogs were inside with me and the goats just outside. I suddenly heard this alarm vocalization unlike anything I've ever heard from my animals, but easily could have been. Under the circumstances, I could easily have made vocalizations I have never made before. The goats were beside the tent and whatever it was was right behind the tent. I knew it was something big because my dog will tear after a lesser beast, barking, but the only times I've encountered a bear or a mountain lion with him, he stays right with me and gives a quiet growl that says, this is serious. I grabbed my pepper spray, fearing it was a bear, and started out of the tent, turning as I crouched out of the door and yelling, don't ask me why, at the dogs to stay inside. The goats were beside the tent, pointed at the back. There it was, a Bigfoot. I couldn't see its whole body because it was blocked by the tent, but if it was a female, the breasts weren't prominent. It had medium chestnut fur, was standing erect on two legs, probably eight feet tall. I have a brother who's six foot seven and a nephew who's six foot ten and growing up, so I have some perspective, and probably only twelve feet away, staring straight at me. The face had fur, less around the eyes, but not as bare, and the eyes were all brown, no whites like a deer's eyes. 
Its arms were hanging at its sides. Everything was totally silent. My dogs were beside me, but were all frozen in place. I know that if anything threatened me, one of my dogs would die defending me. On an instinctive level, I was as terrified as I've ever been, but even at the time, I knew I didn't feel threatened. I wouldn't have dreamed of using the pepper unless it had attacked. In retrospect, I thought it was interesting that I didn't have, at least under those circumstances, a fight-or-flight instinct. I simply froze in place. Perhaps if it had done anything menacing, I would have reacted differently. But I felt simultaneously terrified, instinctively, and amazed. Before that moment, I had never even known if I believed in Bigfoot or not. Had I thought about it, I would have assumed it would be something to ponder in the Pacific Northwest, but certainly not in Colorado. Had never once, for all the thought I put into what would happen if I encountered, thought of the possibility of encountering one, and was totally unprepared for it and in awe of it. It seemed unhurried. We stared at each other for what felt like a long time, then it made a low, rumbling sound and turned its head, and I caught just a glimpse of another back behind it. It looked back at me, then they turned and loped off out of sight. I could feel the vibrations in the ground. I got the feeling that nothing in the encounter was threatening to me or the goats, that they were just curious. There was a slight breeze, and I was upwind. Somehow I doubt that was accidental, so I didn't notice a particularly strong smell. I think I had felt the vibration as it or they approached, but thought it was the goats. During the entire encounter, from the vocalization on, except for the breeze, it was totally silent, and the sound, birds, etc., resumed a few minutes later. We all slept very peacefully that night. I found no tracks, but the ground was so dry and hard, I couldn't make a very good track when I tried. My older dog stayed right beside me, alert and ready to act. The puppy seemed unfazed by it all. The puppy had come back at one point earlier in the day, having rolled in what I thought was human manure. Now I'm not so sure. The next morning, I packed up and left, more because I felt like I was intruding in someone else's space than feeling danger. I felt like I was being watched, and gauged from the animals that they did too. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you enjoyed today's video, here's one you don't want to miss. Also, if you have a story you'd like to share on this channel, email me, lynnsmith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I hope to hear from you soon.